Thanks for joining us for another edition of Issues and Answers. I'm Ian Boyne. The Minister of National Security, the Honorable Peter Bunting, is our guest today. He'll be speaking to us about the critical areas under his portfolio. We know that this matter of national security is uppermost in your minds. And therefore, we put the questions that we imagine you would want the minister to answer. We thank you so much for joining us. Minister, good to, to have you in our studios. Glad to be here. In light of the increase in, in, in crime and our, our failure to um, get crime uh, down to an acceptable um, level, there have been calls for your own resignation. There has been the view that you have not succeeded in this portfolio and therefore um, you should step aside. How do you, res how do you respond? Well, there have been calls from, I think, the first month I was in office. Um, I, I, I well recall my first morning um, waking up to the call from police control one day in office, and it was to report that there were eight murders mm -hmm. overnight in the 24-hour period. What a start. And um, life has been quite different since that yes. time. Uh, I think... Some of the, you know, everybody is, is entitled to, to make a call. And I think, you know, we often look for a scapegoat, um, a simple target when, when things are not going wrong. Um, among other things, it, it helps us avoid, you know, taking responsibility for, for what we can do. But what about the view that you should take responsibility? Well, there should be you some know, accountability that I, you that should exercise. I'm, I'm always accountable to the people and, mm -hmm. and to the prime minister who appoints me. But when you hear the calls, you know, you would expect them to hear, their, what is it that I yeah, should have done, done okay. that I didn't do? Right. And I, hear, I don't hear anybody saying that. Yes. Because in the almost two years that I've been minister, um, we've made tremendous investments in, in the security apparatus. We've spent over a billion dollars on vehicles, um, more than three times what was spent in the previous two years. Mm -hmm. We have uh, recruited well over 2,000 additional police personnel. We have in the two years? In the two years. Wow. We've passed a whole series of legislation, some of them very powerful and which we're already getting convictions under. Uh, we have brought uh, additional technology to bear. We've improved relationship with our international partners. Uh, we have... Uh, improved our intelligence collection and analysis capability. So, you know, it's, it's one thing to, to stand and criticize, but what, it, what is it that I should have done that I haven't? And, you know, I, I'm always open to, to, to doing better, but one thing I do know, Ian, I mean, this has consumed my life for the past yeah. two years. Um, I, it's a job that you live 24 hours of the day, even when you're sleeping, mm -hmm. it still uh, preoccupies you. And it's something I feel very committed to, very passionate about. And as long as I have the opportunity to continue in this role, you know, I'm going to give it my all. And just a few days ago, you launched a Unite for Change campaign. And the uh, thrust of this is that national security is the business of all of us. It takes a, a cooperative effort to deal with this. Um, explain to us further this Unite for Change Absolutely. The, when you look at all the studies of the countries, or in some cases cities in bigger countries like the United States, for example, where they have made dramatic improvements in the uh, safety and security environment, in almost every case, it has resulted from a multidisciplinary approach. Mm -hmm. It's not just police force alone. Um, you have... Uh, interventions at the level of school um, because oftentimes the problem of violence is largely a problem of youth violence yes. um, where oftentimes school age boys in particular um, form a sort of, of pool of recruits for criminal gangs and organized crime so school interventions um, public health interventions how we design a built environment um, how we do uh, uh, what is generally referred to as renorming or reshaping the norms yes. when you have dysfunctional um, elements of culture that develop mm -hmm. in communities which uh, facilitate one way or the other criminal activity or accept 
criminal activity as a norm, then you have a, the challenge of renorming or reshaping mm -hmm. the norms of, of a society. These things don't happen overnight. Um, we got where, where when you know, I uh, showed a graph of the increase in murders over the last four decades or so, you know, it's pretty much a steady upward climb. Um, and that deterioration is going to require sustained effort over years mm -hmm. to change. It won't just come from crime control um, initiative, but also crime prevention initiatives, mm -hmm. uh, which deals a lot with that intervention, community by community, yeah. um, dealing with employment and, and employability, dealing with uh, community level structures yeah. and strengthening and empowering community so level an integrated justice systems, etc. Approach. We, we take a break at this point, Minister. When we come back, I want to talk about uh, some of those integrated uh, approaches to uh, security. The Minister of National Security, the Honorable Peter Bunting, is our guest on Issues and Answers. We take a brief break. This is Romain Virgo. I'm your appeal to all of the youths them to just stay away from crime and violence. We know the temptation, the money, the fast life. People say them rate you. But that will only take you nowhere. If you stay in school and focus, then you can achieve anything. Be your own leader. A gang is a dead end. A message from the Ministry of National Security. Welcome back, Minister of National Security, the Honorable Peter Bunting, who a few days ago launched the Unite for Change campaign, speaks to us on issues and answers. And Minister, have you been working with various stakeholders to ensure that this integrated approach is taken with regard to national security? Absolutely. We're restructuring how we work at the interministerial level. Mm -hmm. and we've brought all the key ministries on, on a, onto the Public Order Committee of Cabinet, which I chair, and <coughs> we're going to try and coordinate all the various social interventions that we have, not just from the Ministry of National Security, yes. but from other ministries, not just from projects, but from their mainstream budgets, to see how we can um, coordinate, you know, the so-called joined-up government mm -hmm. uh, to, to have the biggest impact possible. But beyond that, we want to really, and I've met individually with the umbrella group of churches, mm -hmm. I've met with media owners, I've met, I've gone down to the Ministry of Education, uh, Minister Twaits has allowed me to speak to his, his senior management team, okay, because yeah. we see um, school-based interventions, Absolutely. positive okay. behavioral yes. intervention support at the level of the schools. Because mm -hmm. typically by 12 or 13, um, you can identify a potential gang recruit. Yes, yes. And if you have an effective intervention, then the odds of them going you know, the yes. wrong way will be much less. Um, in fact, one of the studies that uh, Dr. Ward, our epidemiologist, Ward, um, yeah. shared with us uh, was that in a particular gang or gangs in a particular area that they studied, 86% of gang members had dropped out of school before grade nine. Mm. That means before 15, 15 years old. And therefore, if you imagine a 15-year-old boy on the road every day, nothing to do, yeah, and he's going to up, he not attached to any yes. training institution, any apprenticeship, etc. cetera, mm -hmm. um, then they're a very vulnerable target group mm -hmm. for gangs to recruit from. And gangs deliberately recruit from, the, from that um, pool because one, they're, they're easily influenced, they're unattached, they're looking to belong to something, and they believe that the security forces will be um, less serious in taking on these kids. Yes. You know, and even if they're caught, the courts, etc., are going to be gentle because yes. these are juveniles. Well, yes. You know, even though in some cases we've had juveniles who have been arrested um, for 10 murders. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it's, it's a complex, challenging um, issue. I think if we believe it's going to be resolved by policing alone, we're, we're being overly simplistic. Mm -hmm. um, 
all the cases of success show that um, in Colombia, for example, where they were battling the, the narco terrorists yes. for decades, when problems. they turned the corner in the 2002 Two. to 2010 period was when the entire society got behind yes. the mm. government in terms of the what they call the, the democratic security plan. When the entire uh, uh, society when the entire society said, look, enough, is enough, enough is enough. We're turning our face against these um, so, so your Unite for Change campaign is aiming at bringing about this kind of critical mass in the society. Precisely. And I and I really um, use this opportunity to appeal again to you know all well thinking persons NGOs, churches, um, there are a lot of groups out there to come on board and there's something that everybody can do. You know, if a church would just take responsibility, adopt one community um, in the area that they operate and say, mm. we're going to do some things towards reducing violence in this community. And not that they will be responsible. Yes. Obviously, ultimately, the government is responsible. Yes but they're making themselves accountable Absolutely. to improving the situation. And if we have that, um, service clubs, mm -hmm. if some of our private sector organizations take on as an issue, some of those um, foundations that big companies have um, could take on the issue of youth violence prevention yes. and, and see that as a meaningful thing to put their resources, not just money, but uh, some of the resources of their their management resources yes. of their executives yes. and take this on as an issue in the communities in which they operate yes. I think eventually you'd get a momentum going mm -hmm. that would be paradigm shifting yeah. uh, celebrities can go into communities give motivational um, uh, talks absolutely and one of, one of the things that I'm very encouraged by um, there's a group of, of artists who have taken on voluntarily yes to do a song to support the Unite for Change campaign. Oh. And I'm hoping that, you know, within a week or two, we will be out. Be, we, that will be out. Yes. And they're, and they're doing it free of cost. Well, Minister, there are some other issues that we need to talk to you about next week. So we're going to um, invite you to be back with us um, next week. Minister of National Security, the Honorable Peter Bunting, talking to us today about the recently launched Unite for Change uh, campaign, a campaign that uh, ought to involve uh, you. We'll be back next week to talk to us further on national security issues. Until then, Ian Boyne wishing you a pleasant day.